and this video is based on uh, the ADF. So I came across a scenario where we had to introduce new properties, new parameters into a JSON file. So I think if you have worked already worked with Azure Data Factory, you might know that there are two JSON files. One contains the uh, actual artifact details of the ADF, and the other one contains uh, the uh, the parameters or the configurable properties associated with any ADF account. So as uh, you might know that this video is not for those who are beginners in ADF. Uh, these this video will be helpful if you're already working in ADF. I think you might already know about this, but I came across this particular scenario last week, so I thought it would be worth sharing. So the scenario is that uh, let's say you have uh, a Databricks uh, you know, notebook that you are uh, kind of uh, you know running with the help of ADF. You the ADF is orchestrating the run of that notebook, so. There are various properties associated with the notebook like cluster ID, existing cluster ID, and bunch of other properties. Now, by default, these properties would not be available to you in uh, the parameter file, in the parameter JSON file, in the ARM template. So you would have to, you know, somehow can get these properties configured so that if even if you are, you know, deploying the ARM template manually or using a CI/CD pipeline, you can use these properties. You can uh, make sure that these properties are con configurable if you are going from a lower environment to the higher and higher environment. So that is the actual crux of the uh, the video. Uh, again, I would like to give a summary that what I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm not exactly going to show you what happened, what transpired during the actual uh, you know uh, project implementation, but I would be taking an example. So. If you have a property in the main ARM template JSON file, and if you want to leverage that into or make that configurable uh, as you move from one environment to the uh, to the other, uh, you would ha have to have that you know particular property added to your parameter file. So how do we do that? This is you know, something that we're going to discuss. So with that, let me share my screen. So this is our ADF pipeline. This is our ADF account. And um, so this is my personal account. So let's try to generate the ARM templates. Export out the ARM template. So first and uh, the, the 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 most important prerequisite for this to work is uh, that you need to be connected to Git. Uh, it could be uh, GitHub or you can be connected to Azure Git and uh, we would be changing uh, or we would be adding the property that we want to be part of our parameter file using this option arm template configuration so you can see here you can so even if you have global parameters if you want them to uh, be configurable uh, through the parameter file arm template parameter file you can just check this uh, you know uh, tick checkbox and uh, that can work for you now let's first of all export the ARM template. And uh, let's open that. So the ARM template has been opened. Let's open the parameter file. So we have opened the file and uh, it's a fairly small ADF account where we have uh, not more than 10 ADF pipelines. The whole purpose of this uh, ADF account is to give a demo. So you can see there are various you know, parameters uh, over here. So what I was uh, talking about is that if you want to introduce a new parameter or a property, how do you do that? So let's take an example of, uh, let's say, Azure blob storage. So most of the times you would want to do it for the uh, link services. Let's go to link services. And here you can see that we have Azure blob storage. Let's open the code behind it. So right now it is showing us service endpoint. If you 
know, maximize this if I can. Seems like I'm not able to maximize it, but anyways, you can see here that the service endpoint is available, but what if there is any other property which we want to configure? Here, the only properties that are available is account kind, so let's use that. So we would want to introduce this account kind in the parameter uh, JSON file so that we can configure it. Actually, uh, honestly, it does not really make sense to include this because it, was all, it will always be storage V2, but I think you get the point, so let's close this out. Now we need to go to Manage tab again. We are already into the Manage tab. Uh, let's go to the ARM template tab. And then as I uh, mentioned in the beginning that we need to. Uh, we need to go into the ARM template configuration uh, section and just click on this edit button or edit hyperlink. So it will open up a JSON file for JSON file for you. And most of the properties, the, the property that we are looking for actually is for a linked service, but in uh, your case, it could be linked to a data set. It could be linked to credentials. So uh, accordingly, you can, you know, you can modify those or you can add those. So here we are looking for account kind. Make sure that the uh, the case or the spellings uh, are exactly the same. Otherwise, it will throw an error. Let's give it a space. Click on OK. And now when we export the SAM template, the expectation is the account kind should come in the parameter. So let's export it out. Let's open this. Open this again. And you can see that the account kind has been added. So this is how uh, you can configure uh, some of the properties which are not there in the uh, parameter, you know, JSON file, and uh, you can add these uh, based on, you know, which which property is missing and which property is configurable. Uh, as I <clears throat> mentioned in my uh, in the video earlier, that in my case we had to uh, add the Databricks cluster IDs, bunch of properties associated with uh, the Databricks notebook and it was not coming by default, so we had to add it. And then uh, we were using the CI-CD pipeline, so we made sure that those properties are supplied through CI-CD pipelines, whether you could you know, uh, download it from a key vault or whether you can use variables in CI-CD pipelines. So I hope uh, this video was useful, so I'll keep on bringing more you know, videos. It's not, not only to help uh, others learn from it, uh, it's also for me to, you know, uh, always remember these kind of uh, changes or, you know, these kind of uh, things that we have, that I've implemented. And at the end of the day, uh, it helps me, you know, personally improve my communication skills, which I think is must to succeed in today's world. So with that said, uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.